Uh, this is Michael Guidi. Um, just here to read you my interpretation of Kotzel. I'm not going to read you everything I wrote because it is kind of a long interpretation, but I'll, I'll uh, delve into like the mo more important parts and kind of where I decided to focus. So my visual um, that I decided to put was actually a picture of St. Anne's Church in the South Bronx. Um, and then there's children playing outside. I thought it was just very representative of kind of like, um, you know, 9 a.m. to like 6 p.m. or 3 p.m. that kind of Coatsville describes in the book where that time is not when the drug dealers come and not when they're handing out needles. So, um, yeah, here, here we go. Coatsville lets us into the lives of people like 16-year-old David Washington who tends his beloved AIDS-infected mother. 15-year-old Anthony, who eats cold oatmeal from a box for dinner but finds nutrients and hope in his attachments to the elderly poet and Radcliffe educated pastor of St. Anne's Church. 11-year-old Annabelle, a sparkling child whose widowed father icons her pretty dresses every day, irons. We also hear teachers talk about suicidally depressed students with no access to mental health care. Mothers without enough money for food or their families. Children who worry about whether they will die young. Um, running throughout the book is a tragic integrating theme. Uh, the deaths of children, which is like... Two children fall through broken elevator doors to their deaths. Six children die in fires. Fourteen children are shot to death. All these casualty, casualties are memorialized, memorialized by names at the end of the book. Since death is always there for these children, um, there's makeshift shrines all along the corners. Um, I mean, bullet holes probably everywhere. Um, even like a, a shot of a gun happening on Sunday wor worship. So there's just a lot uh, to unpack in this book. Um, for me, one of the most moving data was uh, the new New York Daily News on May to tw May twenty three May twenty third nineteen ninety four said that two hundred of two hundred thirty nine of two hundred seventy seven swings for children in the bar Bronx aren't in place or need repair. <sighs> for me, the small fact dissolves the distance between those of us on the inside and those of us on the the outside. Um, the children who would swing in those parks are as precious as the children who would swing in like those around San Luis Obispo. The difference is that the people there are trying to raise children in a field full of landmines is basically how Coastal describes it. Um, he argues that the questions that need to be asked go beyond like how do we um, devaluate or how do we, you know, fix the problems in, within society? And he wants to know how human beings can devalue other people's lives and how, like, that numbness and destructiveness is sort of uni universalized in, in the society of the South Bronx. Um, human pity is extinguished and the shunning of the vulnerable can come in time to be perceived as natural behavior. Page 186. Amazing Grace asks questions that at once political are now theological. Um, it kind of weaves together the fabric of religion and also the lack of religion, sort of how do we value someone who gives so much value to their own life, but that society gives zero value back to? How cold, how cruel, how tough do we dare to be? <clears throat> Indeed, if we address the distressing state of children in our central cities, it would require a massive shift in public policy, to say nothing of the political climate. <clears throat> that won't happen without any courage and fortitude from our civil leaders. Um, 
despite this the deficiencies in this book I think that Mr. Kotzel has done a great job in exposing kind of the inconsistencies in policy, especially um, in the South Bronx, obviously. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, whatever actions were taken after this book was written have like since been changed, although it's hard to say.